What is up, everybody? And welcome back. Episode 46, Light Warriors Unleashed podcast. And I have a special guest today. And I think that you are going to have fun with me listening to this podcast. Uh, her name is Carol Starr. She has been a psychic slash astrologer for over 30 years. Started back, you know, and she still actually is on um, a psychic like call in phone number that you can get readings from her. And I think that that's hilarious. And if you're watching this on YouTube or if you stepped into the space where you've seen a reel, you'll see she is dynamic and she's got a uh, hundred thousand, like, I think it's like 400,000 followers right now on TikTok and millions of views on her videos over on TikTok and her link for TikTok is in the show notes. So if you want to go check her out, but she does mini readings over there. She goes live, does psychic stuff. And we just had a lot of fun. She's also, she said to me, has had over 60 to 70 businesses in this lifetime that she started. And she goes, I don't do them well. I didn't start them well. I'm not a, like a perfectionist at it, but just own that vibration. We talked a little bit about marketing. We talked a little bit about building businesses, about imprints of vibration. We talked about astrology. She talked to me about my chart a little bit. We moved through this energetic uh, expansion together in all different ways. And you could just tell like, she's just such a beautiful soul. And I am just so grateful to serve up Carol Starr to all of you guys today on the Light Warriors Unleashed podcast. So Carol, it's been really fun. Uh, before I jumped on here with you live, I already started laughing and I knew that the <laughs> energy of what we were gonna be creating together was going to have that feel and flow and just potency. So I just wanna welcome you. Welcome you, Light Warriors Unleashed podcast. I'm so, well, happy. I'm so happy to be here. And I gotta find out your birthday before anything starts. Okay, June 3rd. Just wonder you're a Gemini, that's, that's enough to know. Yes. Okay. I, I really apologize. I'm so sorry that you are, but we'll make do with it. Yeah. <laughs> I I love, like, I'm not the typical, like I've seen a lot of Gemini's more like Jekyll and Hyde energy of Gemini's. I'm more like recluse. So I can be on, but then I'm also like, give me my introverted side where I like pull back in life instead of yeah. the like dynamic. But, yeah. But Gemini's have, sometimes they get a bad rap. In fact, the only sign that doesn't get a bad rap is Libra which I am, of course. Of course you are. And Gemini's really like to have long-term relationships. They're not into jumping around like people think. Yeah. I think that I they're not an overly emotional sign. Mm -hmm. I think they know how to put their emotions in little boxes and deal with them. Yeah. And the Gemini's I've known um, do not are not hand wringers. Do you know what I mean? They're just kind of like, okay, and this is what I have to do. And this is where it's going. And they can, they can separate themselves from all the stuff that I can't. Yeah, <laughs> I try. <laughs> I mean, I'm emotionally involved in everything that everybody says and react to everything and take everything away. Oh, you have a cat. I have two. Yeah. Oh, my God. She's actually not my cat, but she claims like she is. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, but she, yeah. Oh, she's so friend pretty. Of mine. Yeah, she's a friend yeah. of mine's cat. So, yeah. Is she visiting you? Yeah, they're away for a couple of weeks. And so she's staying at my place till they get back. And she's like my spirit animal too. Like every time I do like light language, spiritual clearing work and stuff, she's like right at my feet or on my lap with me. So I'm not surprised she's hanging out with us because like the energy is really great and she likes that. So wow. wow. Yeah, I have Zoe and Chloe around here. I have a big Maine Coon cat yeah. and this little tiny cat. And they had to came to, they came together. Oh. And they're so humorous. I you bet. watch them. The little one is hissing at that when they're, and then they're hugging and kissing each other. So they're darling. I love them. I don't know what their signs are. I should have found out. Yeah. Anyway. I'm sure one of them's a Gemini. <laughs> I, <know. Yeah. laughs> I hope not. Oh, God, no. No. <laughs> well, let's talk about that a bit because, like, um, in the intro, obviously, I introduced you as an astrologer and we came right out of the gate talking about astrology. But I'd love to just hear, like, I know you have a pathway. You've been doing this work for for a few years. We'll call it a couple. A yeah, couple a lot of years. years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Thirty years is okay, right? You know, I started at three, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, you did for sure. Dynamic. Um, so, like, how did this begin? Like, where did this start for you? Because I just I love to hear the story of people's like evolution and how they've gotten. To okay. Well, I my kids were just getting up there they were in school so I felt I needed to do something so I decided to become a paralegal 
God knows where I got that. So my husband at that time, I'm not with him anymore. Right. I know we just feel like we have to say that, mm-hmm. like, you know, like you really care. But and he said, I bet you won't last one class. So I went and intermission came over the break. I left my books there. I walked out. It was so boring that I couldn't tolerate it. <laughs> so I thought, I'll find something else. And then a friend asked me, she said, have you ever had your chart done? Mm. I said, what's the chart? Yeah. <laughs> and so I went and had my chart done and I was sold. And, and then I became an astrologer and I decided that I wanted to become well-known. Mm. So I had a friend call up a radio station saying she was my PR person. Got me on a, a monthly show, then a weekly show. Then I wrote for the um, Arizona, the two Arizona papers from Phoenix, Phoenix Magazine. And I became a speaker, you know, with a little comedy. Yes. And I just decided I did make myself famous in Phoenix and I did it all on my own. And my fame, I had my 15 minutes of fame. Oh, I'm sorry. That my phone rings. It's not me. It's not for me. Answer the phone. No. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. We have we're, we have the same line. It's okay. He gets more calls than we do. Yes. So, um, I just uh, like I said, I, I had my 15 minutes of fame. It lasted about seven years. Yeah. And what happens is with everything, if you don't propagate and keep going, yeah. um. The radio station decided to go in a different direction. You know, those sort of things, you know, and slowly. And as it turned out, that was the time I got divorced and my life changed. And I've always been an astrologer, but I've had a ton of other businesses too. But this is where perfect for me right now is that working on the psychic line and also doing readings. And also I write columns for uh, forecast columns for magazines that I am in my perfect place right now. And I really like that. And I think that um, that is the most important thing in life. And, you know, when I do a lot of readings for people, they, they, they're they lost in what they should do in a career. And I said, where's your heart? Yeah. You know, not what is best for you, not what where you're going to make the money, but yeah. what is it you feel yeah. that you really want to do? And, and I'll talk to them about it. And I'll say that you really need to be helping somebody, but in a direct manner, not, not just because you say you're a realtor and you help people buy houses, but something like you help people directly. Okay. People come to you. They want to know their spirit. They want to know where they're at. And um, I, you know, I, and this is, you're not unalignable. Are you? Am I not what? Unalignable. Alignable? No, no. It's a, it's not a social network. It is a networking. They have 8 million. Oh, you people. know what? I've heard of this actually. I, I think I got an invitation a couple of years ago, but I never, I probably have an account. Maybe I should probably look at that, but like, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just something that's worked really well for me. If yeah. you want to get your, your message out and people, we don't promote ourselves. We network with each other. We have meet, we have group meetings where we meet people. It's really very, very, you know, without giving a whole long commercial, I'll tell you later, but it's worth yeah. looking into. Okay. Okay. It's worth, yeah. yeah, it's worth looking into. But um, so you work all remote, don't you? Yeah. Everything do you, it, yeah. Yeah. And isn't it wonderful that in a way, there's some, always some negative to it, but is that we get to work at home. We get to have this expansive audience that we get to work with. We don't have to go to a store. We don't have to go to their houses anymore. They come, we get to to meet with them and, and work together. There's some disadvantages because there's a lot of competition, a lot. Yeah. You yeah. know, the, the stores online like Etsy, I had, they have 7 million vendors. Yeah. Now, how do you, how do you compete in a world like that? You know, you have to be, really really exceptional and get the best help to work your your programs for you because it's hard to do it by yourself unless yeah. you're too unless you're a genius unless you're a genius well yeah, also, i'm not yeah well you've got a great skill set that is marketable right because of the fact that you come from this alignment of truth and i love what you said about coming from the heart and it's not just about selling real estate it's about really aligning in that, you know, the mission you're here on earth, that intuitive pull, that guidance, that passion that you have in life to serve people with, you know? And I think that that's where the differentiation comes from too, is that 
yeah, there may be 7 million people, but there's a vibration that moves through your products, that moves through your readings, that moves through your energy, that attracts those that are inclined to work with you, buy from you, heal with you, whatever it is, right? Right. Yeah. Are you familiar with uh, Abraham Hicks? Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you, you said vibration. Oh. I thought about that. I listened to a tape a day because... I think working alone, I don't care how optimistic you are and how up you are, you need that message in your brain every day. Because yeah. if you have a bad day of business or a week, you think I'm out of business. You know, everybody, everybody feels that way. Yes. yes. You don't accept the slow times thinking, oh, it's going to get better. You've got to hear it and you've got to align yourself with your, you know, with the vibrations. It Because you, we are what we think. We are. Absolutely. So, yeah. And I have being on TikTok. Yes. Is, um, that's where I got started because really by a fluke, I just thought I'll just go on there. And I did a few videos and they didn't do very well. Yeah. And then I did one. I changed. I thought I got to come up with a good title and I got 4 million views. Yes. I love it. So yeah. that got me going. Yeah. And I, that's where I, I get most of my business is from TikTok. I love because it. It's no longer, even though the primary audience is um, 18 to down to 12, actually, or, or 15, but it's growing. And there's a huge percentage um, over 30 now and 40 and even up to 50. Yeah. Because the people ordering readings are not, once in a while I get a 19 or 18 year old, but they're mostly in their 20s and their early 30s. Yeah, I love this. And I, I've got almost 5,000 followers on TikTok, but I haven't posted any videos in the last year and a half. Um, yeah. One of my videos has over a hundred thousand like views on it as well. But I used to do oracle pulls, like I would just pull cards and do oracle pulls. But they're not actually anything. I, I don't do that work, you know. Like one of a, a, a client, a past client of mine said to me, "Colleen, just get on there and get to 10k. And once you get to 10k, then you can diversify the content." And, and you can do a live. Yeah, I do lives all the time. And yeah. um, I don't know how I, I mean, you know how many followers I have, if you've seen yeah. me. Yeah, 400,000. I don't know how that happened. Like, no, 325,000. Yeah. I think you're um, over that now. No, well, I don't think so. It's, I, if things have, the last a month or two, the, I'm sorry, the last month, yeah. it's like the algorithms have just been not very gracious to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it'll change. Yeah. You know, it'll change. And I de I'm dependent on that for that particular part of what I do. Okay. I have great following to my lives. I get thousands, thousands come. Yeah. And it's just a matter that all business goes through a low momentum. I don't care what you do. Yeah. Okay. And um, I just know that it's, as they, what's her name says, and Esther uh, yeah, says, if I can dream it, I can have it. Yes, absolutely. It's in, I, like it. I always say if it's in you, it's for you, right? So like the desires you want in life are not just someone else's desires that are coming through you. They're in you already and available right. collective for you to bring yeah. into your field. You just and you have to feel the feeling. It's not about wanting the money. It's I think about what making money means. It means that I'm helping more people out there and I get to uh, play poker more often. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> and I can save up some money that is always good to have and it feels good, you know, and no, I, I, like I said, I'm really grateful for what I do. And I think that astrology, fortunately right now is a pretty hot topic. Yes. And tell yes. us a little bit about that. Like I was on your TikTok earlier today and I saw some of the videos you created for August and this podcast will launch in August. And I know some people may listen to it though, down the road. But I think there's a collective of energy moving through right now that is transitional, that people are starting to feel differences or be open to new things. Like, what are you seeing in the energy? Yeah, well, I think that I'm going to say the last five years is that what happened is, and I know I talked to my granddaughter and um, she, you know, I don't know how interested she is in astrology now, but the, when I talked to her last time is that, um, she said, well, my boyfriend's a Virgo and Gemini. And she knew all these kids know all their their um, their top three, which is the, the sun, moon, rising. And then also they often usually know their Venus, Mars, and Mercury. 
Yeah. They already know, the kids don't know how to interpret, but they're all into it because I think that kids today are suffering. Yeah. Okay. They don't know where they're going, who they are, and they aren't ambitious. There's, there's a lack there. Kids don't aren't thinking about college. They don't even care if they own a car. They're living at home a lot. Mom is putting the bill. They have they take an Uber to go drink with their friends, and they spend a lot of time on their iPads. Yes, yes. Yeah. And that's not all of them. Okay, I would it never. But I'm even if we talk about twenty percent, that's a lot. Yeah. Yes, that is a lot. That's, that is a lot. Yeah. So when I do a reading for someone, I always ask. What's important to you? What do you want to know about? So is it relationships? Is it work? Is it career? And they're always confused about the jobs or career they have. Always. Yeah. And relationships, those that are in them aren't sure about it. They want to stick with them. They have a lot of doubts, a lot of thoughts, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I do videos that I send and I do FaceTime and also written reports. So they have a choice. Yeah. And I always like the FaceTimes because I can hear their voice and they can ask me questions and we can talk yeah. you know and you always hope I always feel I like to think that I help people in my way like you are we all help in different ways you know you yeah. might be more of a spiritual guide and also some of your psychic feelings this is a little more pragmatic okay it's a chart there in front of them and yeah. and none of it's cast in stone yeah and I said whatever I tell you you have an opportunity to change your life yeah. And also it takes 25,000 years to duplicate a reading. Mm, interesting. Like you are unique and if, yeah. and even someone born five minutes later than you can yeah. have a totally different chart. Right. Cause well, the, that's totally, but a lot. Right. The degrees of where the planets are in alignment, they move as we, the time. Yeah. They go, well, to make it astrological, they go, all the planets go from Aries to Taurus to Jet, they go round yeah. and, the sun, people know their zodiac sign because the sun changes on a regular basis. Right. So we know, but the moon takes two and a half days. So we have to look up. Yeah. And then at the other end, we have Pluto that takes tw up, up to 25 years to go from yeah. one sign to another. Yeah. So they're all different and they have different influence in your life. Yeah. And, um, but people, I mean, I, I rarely have anybody do a chart that's doesn't have a problem or doesn't want to know no. answers I'm yeah sure. but, but interesting I got a call on my psychic line and it was because she said I just want to catch you up on what's going on and I thought well that's nice to pay money to me and she said the divorce went through and we're doing I like I'm a girlfriend I, I love, I love that. that yeah and I didn't want to say you're spending money you know she knows yeah and I have a lot of people, people think that only, you know, like, I, I don't know what to say, quacks, but, um, you know, wild people call on, on a hotline. But I get, I have lawyers, I have actually a psychiatrist, I have an MD, I have a therapist that is, I have all kinds of people, and there are lots of of young kids that call up and they have three minutes because it costs, God, what's happening in my relationship? And what's going on in my life? I just ask, who the hell knows? No, I don't. I have to think very quickly and come up with something. And they're usually pretty, you know, we talk about it. And honestly, the, the main reason they call me, they want someone to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah, they want to know. It's still a thing. Like, I, I remember back in the day when I was a young kid, like calling these lines and like pranking them almost, or the like sex lines that they used to have where you could like call in, you know? So I didn't even know they still had these, which is amazing. So fun. You remember the 900 numbers? Yes. I, I worked for, a, a, it was a friend. So I had, my calls were about people living on the street, you know? So the, there would be calls for, for everything. And I just remember one girl, I got to talking to her and she met some guy online and she was, and she, her grandmother owned her house. She and her grandmother died and she owned the house and she was going to meet this guy in Vegas with carrying her wedding gown with her. And she was going to marry this guy. She, she hardly knew. And I think all he knew about her was that she owned a house. And I think it did not turn out well is what I remember. Yeah. And I thought people, I, and I understand they're so wanting to have a relationship yeah 
that that I can tell by the voices of these people and their these guys are a lot of them are losers. I mean, they are they don't want to settle in. Some of them have been in jail. Some of them are just using their money. Yeah. You know, and you can't tell them that, and I can't dwell on that. I have to say, you know, and they're worried that their guys are going to disappear and not call them. I thought you should be glad. No, I, I do. You know, I don't say that. Yeah. Know, right. right. Be glad I didn't call you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I said, think about if this is what you want for the rest of your life. Yeah. Somebody you don't know where they are, if they're chasing around, if they're spent gambling your money. It sounds exciting now because you want that man, but that gets old in about one month, you're going to be a very unhappy person. But you can't tell somebody that really. They got to find out for themselves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that. so I think that as you, as a, you know, a spiritual guide, I'm going to call you, yeah. and with spiritual feelings, yeah. is that we see life in a whole different way than yeah. anybody else does. Okay. Yeah. And we see meanness more likely. We can tell when people are mean. Yeah. And, um I have, my friend next door has no emotions at all. Doesn't show. I love her. She's a dear friend. Yeah. And she could go through the same experience as I do. Yeah. And it wouldn't let them bother her. Yeah. I make such a big deal about it. Oh my God. Do you know what that person did? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the tough part. We feel things too much. It's hard to brush things off all the time because we know what people are saying and we know what they're thinking and we know what they're doing. And yeah. it's not honorable well and it's interesting too like i've i've learned through the years how to see through the veil of that you know like and to really understand that we are in an earth experience and part of the experience is the duality of it right and not that i condone anybody's actions but it's almost like it makes me breathe a little bit more like i'm like okay they're dealing with their trauma of that stuff that happened when they were five years old and haven't dealt with it yet and you know, they're moving through that. And I, it's like, I can hold space almost a little bit different than I used to be able to, because I, would yeah, I think I've, yeah, you know, I've gotten better at yeah. its acceptance. Yeah. yeah. Um, just real brief things. How, when you brought that up, yeah. I, I went to Seattle for my granddaughter's graduation from high school and my ex-husband was there who I haven't seen in years. Yes. And he was very abusive to my younger son. And my younger son and I don't talk. I, mean, it's long. I, I don't want, just want to give you the facts here. Yeah. And he talked and he said, well, I'm so glad that you and Scott have a wonderful relationship now. And he said, we always have. And he was horrible. I mean, the kid was verbally abused and mean, and it was scary. It was, a, it was a terrible. And I normally, I would want to defend myself in that. And I thought, you know what? If he's living his past, with happy memories, let him live them. What does it matter? Yeah. I just suddenly, I thought, wow, I've come a long way to have that kind of thought. Yes. Yeah. Because when you know somebody's responsible for your son's, your child's unhappiness. Yeah. But we're not going to win any battles. No. Any battles. And so, and I've also become more accepting of people who are mean and terrible. Yeah. That they've got some problems. They have to live with them. I don't want to be around them. I don't have to be around them. Yeah. Yeah, that's the important yeah. part. Like we don't have to be around them. We can put them in a box and they can be in their box. And it doesn't mean we have to condone their behavior, but it doesn't irk us the way it used to irk us, right? Right, yeah, I think that it's becoming, um, I've always been a reactor. People are either reactors or they're acceptors. Yeah. And eventually I accept, but I do, I react to, I take probably everything. Thing. Yeah. I, you know, I think stop me, please. But I can't. That's me. And all the work in the world, all the tapes I listen to, which I've improved, yeah. I will always be a reactor. Yeah. Well, I don't know that I want to change it. You know. Oh, it's part of who you are and your experience here. And you brought that in to be like, this is how I'm gonna live. You know. And you drop into that and own it. And then you're like, okay, we're done reacting now what really needs to be done you know <laughs> right right absolutely and and i think um is that people are we're all so different we have so we have different paths in life to take yes. and this is where astrology to me gets really interesting because i look at the big six the sun moon rising and venus mars mercury and i use that as i do the rest of the chart and i always tell people 
I am not repeating myself. This shows up a lot on your chart. <laughs> I want to look mine up while you're talking because I just want to see oh. what planets are like where they are. Oh well, yeah, you... we can talk about now. We can talk about you. Yeah, I would imagine you have some water signs on your chart too. Like, you know, not as many as you would think, actually. But yeah. I my cool. nine star key. Have you ever heard of that nine star key? What is that? It's like another kind of form of astrology, but not, and I'm a water, like I'm all water there, which is interesting, but not in my actual chart. Oh, I, have, I have to look that up. What is that called? Nine yeah. star key? Nine star key. And it's nine. K-I. So nine star key. K-I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, but yeah. So tell I, me there are so many know. ways to, how can I say, to skin a chicken, but to, to do a chart. Yeah. And sometimes... Someone will tell me I got their chart all wrong. I said, no, I I do whole house, whole house, whole sign. And they, I don't like the intercepted houses. I feel you are, I learned by doing the whole sign, whole house. And, and an astrologer was fabulous. And I thought, I like the way it reads. It's, it's complicated enough. Yeah. Astrology is complicated enough without adding all these interceptions. This is just my opinion. Yeah. And. I find that it works well for me, okay? Yeah. Because I like to think, feel that, you know, you are a Gemini and your moon sign is in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think maybe it's even in an air sign, another air sign or earth sign, I'm not sure. What is it? I'm wrong. Okay, which one Come do you on, want to know? Which one do you want to know? <laughs> your moon sign, I want to know your moon. Oh, my moon's a Gemini. I'm a Gemini moon too. Okay, I told you, had a, I said you had an air sign. My first yeah. thought was that your moon was an air sign. Yeah. Okay, and your rising get sign? This, get this. My third house is, is also in Gemini, okay, which is ruled by Gemini, right? Well, what is your rising sign? Um, so that is, I don't know a lot about astrology. So what what would be the rising sign? The ascendant? What time you were born by your birth time, and it starts the chart. It, it is a, your rising sign is always start your first house. What, what so if you're saying Gemini's on the cusp of your third house, mm -hmm. that would make you an Aries rising. I'm an Aries rising. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And that would be, yeah, that's where that, so you have that Gemini, Gemini, Aries, and are really very compatible together. It's, it's very, um, energy and figuring out what to do and always, I, they are, none of those are emotional signs. So there is some emotion somewhere. It doesn't mean a water sign. Yeah. Libras. I am a Libra. That is the most emotional sign on the zodiac. Yeah. Okay. There's, but, uh, yeah. So it's not always about the water signs. Well, and I have Libra in Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto. Well. Yeah, but those are just generational things. They, I don't. That that's a different part. But I would I like to know what your Venus, Mars, and Mercury is. Venus is Gemini as well. Oh God. And what about Mercury? Uh, Mercury is cancer. Taurus. Cancer. Oh, cancer. You're, you're either in Gemini, cancer, or the sign before. So that's where your emotions come in. And also, where is Mars? That's your energy, your mental, Mars physical, emotions. Taurus. 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 Okay, so here's, okay, this saves you. Thank God. <laughs> You've got, no, you got the Gemini Aries. This go back. Okay, so we're going to have... A, a nice cancer mercury that says, okay, let's think this out. We're going to work this out. And I think it would be best. And I'm just going to be successful here and do this and get that done. And then your Venus, which is in Gemini. Yep. Okay. So you are either in and out of love all the time or commitment, anxiety there with you. <laughs> Not, yeah. Yeah. And, um, I like the Mars and Taurus because this is how you, this is your, uh, how you know, easily you get angered. It's also about how you plan your day and how you respond when you're in difficult situations, not emotional ones. That's totally different. So your Taurus says, this is where you slow down. This is what saves the Gemini because the Gemini personality is going to always go like that. And so you got that Taurus. So we, you do with your, with your, also with your moons, with your, a Mercury sign of Cancer, yeah. and your your um, not your Venus because that's in Gemini, and your Mars in Taurus. This says, okay, we're gonna work this out. Let's think this is this the best way to go, and what to do. This slows you down. That at least you function. If you had any more Gemini in your chart, you would be probably hanging on one of those flowers out there. <laughs> yeah. and just, yeah. 
No, I'm, I'm teasing. You know that. I'm teasing. Yeah. A lot so, of Gemini though in my chart, right? Like it's like. It's, well, you do. You do. You have the, you have your sun, moon, and you have Venus in there. I have five placements in Libra. Wow. I'm a Libra. But I have a moon in Virgo and a rising Virgo. That's so cool. Yeah. 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 So that makes me very cool. Yes, it does make you very cool. Yes. Um, with my glasses. Well, I decided that there's some really weird, crazy astrologers on TikTok. Yeah. And I, I'm telling you, something. I don't, I, I think this is fine. One guy is at millions of views and millions of followers. And he says, well, Gemini, how are you today? You know, I mean, really weird. Yeah. And I thought, well, people like that. Okay, so he's done well. So I thought, I'm, I'm so matter of fact, in fact, you'll, you'll have to come to one of my lives. You yeah. see how they're running. Yeah. And um, I think if you have 5,000 followers, I think you can now check into that. You might be able to collab. We could collaborate. We can do a, a duo where okay. they're always asking to join. I won't let anybody get on a video with me. Yeah. I got some guy on one time and he started talking in a foreign language and screaming. I had to get off. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, in that, I think I felt that I needed something that wow. sort of set me apart a little bit. I love them. Yeah, they yeah. are amazing. So they know. I mean, everywhere I, on TV, on, t, on the screen, when Sen see me, they now know me by my glasses because yeah. nobody else any like them. Yeah, yeah. So um, you always need something to set you apart. It doesn't have to be your looks. It has to be something that you're doing or the way you market yourself. Yeah, I think that. Um, you know, I was a great marketer before the internet took over, and I had businesses that were very successful because I knew how to market people and make sales. I was, I could make sales calls on the phone and nobody ever hung up on me. Cold yeah. calls. I had it really down. It comes to the internet. It's like, it's like, an, it's like a world that, you know, if you're young enough, you were born with a computer on your lap. Yeah. Yeah. And I had to learn it when I was older. Yeah. You know, and, um, and so it's not like, part of the reading writing arithmetic to me at all it's totally something that i have to learn because i have to survive online yeah so i have somebody who does everything for me just about oh know? that's good and, yeah and i'm just thinking about i don't want to let him go but he's i need someone who's going to be a little more aggressive in the marketing mm -hmm. end of it okay i'm at that point where i really need to get i need to get more vision out there you yeah know, i need to tap it yeah, and I, it's so important too with the message because obviously you're also creating your own ripple effect in the world, right? And you're stepping in to help others align and understand themselves so that they can hold their light more. It's like, that's the mission that I really emphasize with everyone is each person has a light and our job is to light it up. And one of your aspects of that is giving them some answers so that they can hold it, that they can understand it, that they can move right. through it. So, yeah. You know, because people... I sort of divide people up and I call, I, this is a terrible word to call them. They're robots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have friends and they're very nice. They don't read into anything. They don't see anything. And maybe they work. Maybe they play cards all day. Um, maybe they're, they play racquetball all day long or whatever it is they do yeah. is that they really don't see life, yeah. you know? And I'm going to say that, um, okay, I have, five really close girlfriends okay and two of them I feel feel sensitive to life to some degree but I hate to say nobody's like me because they they wouldn't want to be like me anyway but they just don't they don't dig in you know I just when I meet somebody I feel all about them I can tell what's going on in their lives and what's going to happen yeah. and when they say stuff I know what they really mean yeah yeah, of course you do. Yeah, and I don't mean to do that. It's just, right. it's just it. And I, I remember everything. And sometimes you know how people tell you one story, and, and a year later, a month later, it's different. I always know <laughs> you can't do that. So if you want me to forget something, don't tell me, Colleen. Okay, that's right. <laughs> Note to self. Okay. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's, so, I am. Um, so, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. I want you to ask some questions because I think that. People are listening today. A lot of it might not like to know a little bit more about astrology in general. So if you have some questions, that would be super. 
Yes. And I do want to move there because I think that like, I think there's some people that understand like their signs. They know that they were born in a certain month and that they're exactly. Like, and yeah, that's all they know. Or they yeah. say, well, some know they have moon sign and rising signs, but what happens is they'll say, oh, I have Venus in this, in Mercury, or Venus in, um, I'm sorry, Venus in Aries. And I know that makes me da 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 I said, no, it doesn't. It's yeah. the rest of your chart. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem with getting these computerized right online ones. Yes. Because they take everything like this, and their people are either elated or depressed after they read one. Yes. Because they're not real. Well, and there's, yeah, and there's 1,000 million sites online about astrology. You wow. know that. You just go put the word astrology in, and you see there's millions of descriptions of the sun signs, the moon signs, of doing a chart, of the transits, of, of everything. Yeah. But astrology is the sum total of your whole chart. Yeah. yeah. And thank you you're for that. The Gemini. That's yeah. important, right? And yeah. if you're reading the newspapers, um, like Gemini of the day, like some people are like banking that that is actually like 100% truth, but it affects all of it, right? So. If, right. Yes. Yes. And, and I do write some of those columns. So be careful what you say. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I try to make them fun and humorous. And I do follow the play. I look at, I look at, not they're just a sun sign. I look at where Mercury, not, not Mercury, it changes for a month. Mm -hmm. I look where Venus and Mars are and I base my com my comments on mostly on Venus and Mars. And I may mention, you know, Jupiter, which is still direct, but it's going to be retrograde. So people think that when a planet goes retrograde, everything is horrible. Yeah. Tell, tell us about that. I want to know more. About yeah. That. Okay, first of all, we talk, you know, Mercury, Mercury is a popular. Everybody knows when Mercury goes retrograde. Your computer breaks down, all this stuff goes wrong. Yeah. And if you are a Virgo moon like I am, yeah. and a Gemini like you, we're yeah. ruled by Mercury. So we feel it the most, y'all. You You're going to notice all this, your, your printer is singing to you, and yeah. it died. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and then we take Venus. Venus right now is is retrograde in Leo, yeah. and um, which means that, Leos are, and everyone says, oh, my relationship is over. It's awful. I said, no, but don't break up or meet anybody new this month. It might not go well. Yeah. And it does change. And it's only like that every 18 months, it goes retrograde for a month, but it's shadow a month before and a month afterwards too. And then we have when, um, let's see, when Mars goes retrograde, that's your energy. And this is about when I see Mars conjuncting like your first house, which is going to be Aries is your first house. Yeah. And um, Mars is, let's say, in, oh, um, let's see, it, was, it would be in your first house. It would be, just let me see here. Mars, 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 Mars is, let's say, in Virgo. And you're, let's say your fifth house. It's your social life. So I'll say you're putting a lot of energy into your social life. You're meeting a lot of new people. So I, I get a little bit more definitive with that. Right. But then we have planets, like in the summer and the fall, everything is retrograde. Mm, really? So when it comes to Jupiter, what happens with Jupiter yeah. is whatever area it falls in on your chart, yeah. it just means regrouping. Let's go back over and see what we can do better that we got that didn't work out. Or see, let's make some new plans. So it's it's not negative at all. Saturn goes retrograde. I would be careful. Yeah. yeah I would go hide in your house for the entire month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It is. It depends where it is on your chart. Some yeah. people it doesn't affect at all. Yeah. So we look and say, oh, Saturn is retrograde. What's going to happen? Say, well, it's on your, um, it's in your eleventh house. Nothing bad. You might have a fight with a friend, you yeah. know, or something like that. Yeah. And then we have Uranus and Neptune. Both are are retrograde, and they stay in the sign for between ten and fourteen years. Right. So their influence on you is more generational, and I don't like it if it's a ruling planet. Right. Like if you're an Aquarius and Uranus is retrograde, you're going to feel it in some ways. Uh, or you're Pisces. My husband's a Pisces. And Neptune right now is in Pisces as also Saturn. And they're both retrograde. And he's doing okay, I hope. Hey, Jim, are you okay? You know, he's, he's fine. <laughs> and um, so I, I think that I do feel the planets influence our lives. I'm not negating that. But I think you have to look at them and realize that your actions are going to overcome a lot of what goes on. Yeah, you can't help it if um, 
let's say you get fired from your job. Okay. So you're feeling really negative, how you're going to pay your bills and how and you're going to say, ah, it was Venus up there doing it. You know, it isn't like that. You were going to lose your job because you were doing a crappy job or you got laid off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we look, you can't, I think that the planets tell us, help us with what's going on, but we can't blame them for what's going on. Right. You know, I have a woman I'm, um, I'm going to say I'm on a retainer with her because she only calls me to solve problems. <laughs> and she, like, she's going to fly. She wants to know if the plane is going to fall out of the sky. And I figured I got a 50, 50 chance here, right? If it falls out of the sky, she can't call me and complain. So I'm good. No, I'm, I'm you know, I'm teasing. <laughs> and she wanted to know if she was going to get an offer on this house that she and her husband had owned for, he had lived in for a lot of years. Yeah. So I lucked out. I said, you're going to get an offer on the 17th or 18th of June. And she did. Yeah. It didn't go through. And I said, I want you to help you get your house sold before the 12th of July or it's going to be slow. And then she had somebody all ready to buy the house and the foundation has to be redone. And they, they backed out of it. So we talked about when she can get her house fixed and stuff, whatever. So I try to just help her, give her some support. Wow. I'd love more clients like that. That's a, a, that, is, a, that is great. So I do all these things in astrology, as you can tell. Like I yeah. actually, I got to tell you something. Okay. I wear people out when I tell them all the stuff I have done. Yeah. I, I would keep you busy. I've had 60 or 70 businesses or jobs. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, anywhere from restaurant reviews to I wrote for bounty paper towels. I'd made up 500 recipes, you know, just, and I'm an artist. I paint on t-shirts and tote bags and all, I do everything. Not well, and not always successful. I got to yeah. tell you that. It's just that I'm always trying and always doing. But this, I'm com this is my life, who yeah. I am. This is who I am. I love you it. Know? Yeah, I love so it. I love what I do. I love that. I love that when people are happy. Yeah. And they feel better afterwards. Mm -hmm. And of course, I like making money too, because it does pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Don't you agree with me? We, we're not here to do it for free. Yeah, I agree. And, and think about this, Colleen. Let's say you had all the money in the world. Yeah. Would you still work so diligently at what you're doing? Yeah. Like I would still be potent in the space of like I, I've learned how to make the money I made working like seven hour days, 12 hours, like seven days a week, 12 hour days. And now I do four hour, four days, maybe four hours and make more than what I made then. Like I've learned how oh, to yeah. rise and collapse time. So I moved to Costa Rica from Canada because of the fact that I desired to have a different lifestyle than what I had up there where right. I go to yoga or I, if I want to go walk the beach when it's not pouring rain out like it is today, like I can go and do that because that's a choice that I make every single day. You know, I choose. Yes, I do. So you, you've got your, you're living the life you want. Yes. It's coming into play yeah. though. So I'll tell you this, Carol is my man. So I've been single for a while and was in long-term relationships, sort of dated a little bit, but I'm not the type that just dates to date. Like that's not like the typical MO for me, which is interesting. And I'm gotcha. looking for that relationship. I had a lot of work to do on myself. And I feel like he's coming in soon. So it's going to be neat to see how this whole thing plays out for me. Yeah, I will be interested too, because we, we manifest. I do believe in manifesting. Yeah. I manifested my husband before I knew that what the word manifest meant. I actually drew out a thing, what he was going to look like and what he was going to be like and everything, you know, and now I want to kill him. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, but we've been married a long time. We've been married a long time. And yeah. we're, we're no, we're we're very good. And I think there is, I, there's a couple, I love, I have some great sayings. And one of them is, when what you want becomes what you have, you feel different about it, whether it's a bicycle or a person. Yes. And no matter how you love and how much you love your new car or your new guy, once he becomes in your house and he's part of your life, you don't have that anymore because he's there and that's not a bad thing yeah it's not a bad thing yeah um i think that also i always say in a book when we're meeting different people and they say we should meet people who do what we do i said no i said you never know who's going to butter your next piece of bread yes i love Hello? that are you, you there oh what happened oh, yeah 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 
I still yeah. can hear you. And they, lo- they love that. Leo did something. Yeah. 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 It's probably yeah. because of the right. So we don't know who's going to be. You don't know who's going to do for you next. Yeah. The gal who, the gal who connected us. You yeah. probably don't. I don't you know her. No. Um, you know, Alexis. Yeah. Her name is Alexis. She got me in four podcasts. Yeah. And she kind of talked about me. And I didn't even hire her. She had no reason to. And whatever. And that's a real, and I, that's a person, you know, is that yeah. she just gave, she didn't know what, and I offered her, I said, I really would like to work with you. She says, what you do isn't really what is not where I'm at. How about that? Yes. She's really more into the VA type doing all the, the busy work. I don't need that. Yeah. Because I'm the only person who can do what I do. Yes. I hear you. And I get paid by two, by my website pays me and ever clear. So I don't need to bill anybody. Yeah, I yeah. love it. So I the, I need marketing help. And I just getting, helping me work on, I'm always received well, as long as I figure out how to get, how to make it myself seen. Yes. It's an yeah, and that's a big thing too. You have to be um, like, do you ever, let me ask you something. You, I take it, do you do reading similar to what I do or different, but are you with people like I am? Yeah, like I don't do the astrology side, obviously. No, no, I know, I know, I know. Well, I am just closing that kind of side to the business, like today, really. But um, yes, we'll say yes. Let's just say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, so you're not going to be doing that anymore. No, I'm more leaning into like, I do a lot of coaching work. Like I've been doing this work for 14 years and I do a lot of programs and masterclasses and circles. Like I do a whole bunch of other things and- it just is time to kind of close down that side um, and move more potently into the work over here, we'll say. Yeah. Okay. No, we have to make sure, you know what? It's just like I have this great guy helping me. Yeah. And he spends a lot of time editing my videos. And I said, the editing your vi- my videos is not getting me business. I If I do my crappy videos yeah. that I do myself, they get just as much. I said, we need to do more. And he gets real spiritual and real vibration, you know, all this, all this crazy stuff. And, and I said, you see my, I said, he thinks I'm negative. Cause I said, business has been slow. He yeah. thinks that's negative. I said, it's just that. I said, it's going to go back great to the way it was or more. Yeah. But right now I need some help. Yeah. Yeah. And he just, he feel, I think he take it. Per- I think he took it personally. Hmm. And he's kind of like, I, I need to make him feel okay. He's a wonderful young, he's only 25. Yeah. yeah. And he's a, he's a wonderful guy. He really is. Yeah, really, really this guy. So anyway, so anyway, so I'm gonna have to go because I'm doing another podcast. But I think we covered. Did we cover everything? You feel pretty comfortable. I have a few more minutes. I'm not rushing off. Is there any anything else that we need to? Um, yeah, I just want to ask you the question. Like, you know, moving into August, like you brought up on your TikTok some mm-hmm. dynamics, and I can send people to the TikTok. They're gonna have all your links and everything in the show notes, but. What would you like to say to people overall about August? Like, what can they expect in the month of August, astrology life? Okay, it's funny. I was just doing a forecast on it. Yeah. So let me go through all the signs. I'll do that for you. How about that? Okay. Yeah. Aries are, um, oh God, now I have to think. Yeah. Let's see, do I have my thing here? Anyway, let's start with Leos. Leos are going to have, Leos are great people and they have a lot of energy. But what they're going to have, I think, for, um, August is they're going to have relationship issues. Okay. And they also have Mars and uh, Mars is also in Leo. So there's going to be a lot of fights, a lot of ag. It's not going to be an easy month for Leos. I will tell you that. Yeah. And um, then we have the Virgos. Virgos are going to, let's see here. Let me see if I can separate them. Virgos. Let's see. They've got everything is going on in Leo. I think right now, let me see. I have a planet here. So I can do this really easily. Okay. We're going to talk about it. Oh, I don't have, I, I just have September. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Virgos, are, this is miracles, miracle time for Virgos. Also time to use your intuition and to really trust your judgment. And then we have Libras. Libras also are going to, to good to join groups and really get with your friends this month and really help some people that you know. And then we're going to move into the Scorpio. So I can pick backwards like this better. Yeah. Scorpio. Okay, um, this is about work, but this is about work and your reputation, how well you're doing at work, how your customers see you, how your clients see you, your customers, or what else is um, just going on in that area in your work. And then we have Sagittarius. Sagittarius, got, okay, philosophy, this is a time for 
you very philosophical Sagittarians is a good time for you to take a yoga class, work on your manifesting. And also, are you familiar with tapping, by the way? Yeah, EFT. Yep. I do. Yeah, I do it every day. I, I'm really I'm a believer in it. So and then Capricorns, Capricorns are always survivors. OK, they're never too happy. and They're never too sad. They are, you know, they have this sort of dour personality, but they're very, uh, it's hard to get any emotion from them or get them to share their feelings. My ex-husband, by the way, you know, so I think this is about other people's money. And I think that's a good time for you to invest, but you're always smart in doing it anyways. They are. So yeah. we have Aquarians and we have, everything is about partnership. And if you have a partnership and work on it and be there. And if not, you might have a new partnership. We're waiting to get to Gemini. I know, just can't wait to find uh, out. Okay. Yeah. I know, that's what you're thinking. So we have a, a Pisces, and Pisces are, we have a lot of retrograde planets, but they'll work through them okay. And um, their avenue is in, that's in your work. This is in work situation now, not about how your clients are or how they're doing. It's in work and your, their circumstances. And it's going to be really good this month. Okay. So then we're going to move into, um, oh, I said Pisces, no, Aries. Aries people. Okay. I have to see where the plant, that's in their third house. Okay. Short trips and journeys. And also good communications are for you this month. If you have to make a, a presentation or speak before a group, you're going to do just great. And then we have Taurus people. Taurus is about, wait a minute. Let me see. Got this right. Fourth house. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to skip over Taurus. We'll go to, <laughs> I got to go to Gemini. Okay. I can think of it. I got back there. Okay. Gemini. Okay. This is the time for new things in your life, making some changes, doing some good things, and also be mindful of all the possibilities that you, that are there and make sure you're making the best choices. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, that's for you. Yes. Yeah. With that Gemini moon sign too. Yeah. yeah. If, you know, you're always going to, you know what? Got the Gemini moon. You're always going to have a relationship. You're always going to have somebody there. And, and it's not like, I, you know, there's some signs they're in desperation. Yeah. Gemini's are never in desperation. And with that moon, if it comes along fine. And if it doesn't work out, you're not going to put up with any crap from anybody if it's not working out. Yeah, that's very true. Very, you're smart in your whole, you know, in a way. And yet, Gemini's do like long-term relationships. Yeah. And um, sometimes best not making a commitment of marriage, just living with somebody or having a long-term relationship works just fine. You need your time alone. You need to have, you don't want anybody heckling around you at all. Yeah, no. no. And you're not one of those needy relationship where you need all this attention all the time. No, I do not. No. Yeah, I do yeah. know that about you, that, yeah. Probably your moon sign is, it really tells me more about females than their sun sign because we are our moon signs. We are. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. It's our whole emotional perception of life. And some of it can be really cool. And like, I knew you had um, air signs. You have a lot of air signs. Yeah. Because I don't think you're overly emotional. I think you deal with your emotions. I do. Because if you're working with other people's emotions, you have to be up back up here. You yeah. can't get into them. And I have to watch that. Yeah. You know, I'm really good on the on the cell phone, you know, I'm doing the phone ones, but when I'm reading charts, when I'm FaceTime with them, I get, oh my, I get, I get right caught up and I got to be careful. Got to back <laughs> off and do that. I do. Yeah. So yeah. fun. Oh yeah. Cancer. So we got cancer and Taurus. I did. Can oh, did, did I skip cancer? Can yeah. Oh no. Cancer's for money. Everything's good for money this time. Be careful with it. And Taurus is, here. I got, I think I got Taurus. Oh, fourth house. Home, home is where the heart is. Okay, lots of stuff going on in your home. This is a time maybe for doing some repairs to take care of, some redecorating and some fun things. And spruce up your office because it needs a little attention. Love this. Okay. So I know we've got to run. So is there anything else you want to say to anyone listening? Anything? Uh, no, I, you know, can I send you over some links? I do have um, written on, yeah. Because giving links out, they're not going to remember them, you know. So, and the only ones I want to do are by website, and um, also, I think uh, TikTok. That's yeah. It. If you give people too many links, they're not going to look anyway. Yeah. So those are the two things. So I'll write them out for you afterwards. And this one has been so much fun. It has been, and I love it. And I love the I energy know. you brought and all the information, everything that dropped through. Yeah. yeah, but let's stay in touch. Let's. Whenever I have this feeling that there's more happening here, I love it. I want to. Yeah, say that we're going to do something that. 
is going to work for both of us. And I don't know yet. I just, I got that feeling and it's just kind of sitting on this here. And I felt it the minute you came out and I saw you. Yes. I love this. Yes. Yes. I love the I, through, these, through my very fancy glasses. I saw you much better. of course. <laughs> Carol, it's been a blast. And thank you so much for all the time. And I so appreciate you. Well, I loved it. I hope to come back someday. Maybe you'll invite me again. I will. And we'll, I don't know, we'll do something really fun and who knows what that'll be. Yeah. Maybe after the first of the year, we'll tell everybody how their year is going to be. Oh my God. Let's do that. Okay. We'll yes, plan that'll on. be fun. Okay. So I've been, I, whenever I press this leave button, I feel like I'm leaving my life behind. <laughs> you're not, you're not, but you're leaving everybody for this session right now in this space. Oh no, I might start crying. We'll see you again soon. It's all okay. good. You have great fun. So what did I tell you? Like, She stepped in. That was a lot of fun. We were all over the map, uh, moving balls around. But I hope that you took some valuable information from this space of time and understanding yourself a bit more. And maybe you're inclined, you know, to get your chart read or to actually move through this energy. Whatever feels aligned for you, take action on. And all I'm asking is that if something pinged for you, if you move something through the space, if you were like, yes to this, Throw us up on Instagram and tag me there and maneuver that through because, you know, we only get to reach new people by you guys helping us serve. And I'm just so grateful that Carol shared her heart and her soul with us and was transparent and vulnerable and real in her space that she was in and talking about all these different dynamics of what we moved through in that podcast and just grateful that you guys are here listening and that every single week you guys step up. And for those of you that have been following the podcast since day one, I'm grateful for all of you guys being here and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next episode. And thanks again.